Uh, good evening. I am Timothy Priyana from the League of Women Voters of Buffalo, Niagara, and delighted to be here again. There are two open positions on the Wilson Central School Board of Education for three year terms each. The tradition of holding a candidate's form for this election is long one for the League. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization that encourages, informs, and active participation of citizens in government. The League works to influence public policy through education and advocacy. Moderating the school board candidate meetings is one of the many functions. Membership is open to everyone. Students may join for free. Learn more about the League on our website, lwbdn.org, or on Facebook. The ground rules for the candidate form. Presentation should be strictly confronted to issues, not personalities. The orders of the opening statements have been predetermined by the candidates to drop the position for the evening. This event will end at 7 p.m. Wilson Central School District makes the only authorized recording of this event. This event is to be live streamed in its entirety and recorded, and the link will be made available at the Wilson Central School District website. The link can also be available on the, on the Wilson Central School District website. It may be a broadcast in its entirety. Only licensed media, including TV, radio, and newspapers, are entitled to air the portion of the recording. In keeping with the Federal Communications FCC regulations, all others who air this recording may do so only in its entirety. No one is permitted to publicly display edited footage in any manner. We request from the audience members to turn off their cell phones, and at this time, Please keep them turned off during, throughout the event. We also request that you refrain from applause until the forum is complete. We seek to provide a candidate with the greatest amount of time to respond to questions. Format, to, format for tonight's uh, forum, Janet Bibsell is our timekeeper. She will raise the green paddle when the speaker has one minute left, the yellow paddle when there's 15 seconds left, and the red paddle to uh, complete your time. When the time has expired, the candidates are expected to stop when completing the census being spoken at the time. Opening statement. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement. Biographical stress and platform outlines are usually presented. Audience questions. Each candidate shall have two minutes to respond to each question. I will be asking written questions submitted in advance, alternating with those submitted by members of the audience here. Today, Judy Hover will screen questions for vulgarity, profanity, appropriateness, and redundancy. The questions must be directed to all candidates. The students from the participation in government class will distribute and collect cards and pencils for use to write up. They will take the questions to Judy Hover. Questions will be asked of the candidates in rotating order. Closing statements, each candidate shall have allowed two minutes for a closing statement to summarize throughout and reiterate points that were brought forth during the meeting. This form is designed to be a dialogue between the audience and the candidates, and it's not a debate. I will, each, I will announce each candidate's name only for the opening statement. I'll be happy to repeat any questions if you need me to, if it's your turn to respond. We can move to the next person to respond with any, without any introduction. We will move to the next candidate to the left to be the first person to answer the next question. I will introduce the candidates in reverse order for their uh, concluding statements. Now we, we will begin with opening statements from Christopher Carlin and then followed by the Zonda. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is uh, Chris Carlin. I've been on the uh, Wilson School Board since 2011. I was appointed to an open seat at that time, and uh, since that time, I've run for re-election uh, multiple times. So, um, I'm a lifelong resident of Bransonville. Prior to when I, and growing up, I was actually living in the Loopport end of the district, so. Um, that's where I gratefully from. Um, 
when in the U.S. Army, when I was uh, just after graduation, came out, uh, was hired by the sheriff's office, attended Niagara Community College, um, served 26 years in law enforcement between the Niagara uh, County Sheriff's Office and the Niagara Falls Police Department. Uh, upon retirement from those agencies, uh, I then went and um, was hired by the U.S. Federal Government uh, Department of Labor OSHA, where I'm currently working. And um, throughout, again, while I was working, uh, about three years active duty and 31 years, 30, 30 years of uh, reserve time. So uh, with a tour of the uh, tour in Iraq, Vietnam, that not thing. So um, I um, enjoyed uh, I enjoyed my time on the Wilson School Board. We got some outstanding uh, school board members for working. We work together. I think we provide outstanding service for the um, school district. And um, you know, I think there's nothing more I can say. We got great staff, great administrators. Uh, uh, and we make Wilson a great place because of the students we have here too. So um, that's that's about me. Thank you. That's hard to follow. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Ben Saito. I'm hard to go by that. Um, much easier. Um, I'm here just mostly to support um, the public education and. Uh, I do have kids in the school district ranging from elementary school to the high school, and I also have a spouse that's a teacher and coach in the district. Um, I did grow up in a little island where public school was not a thing. Um, so this is um, a big thing that I want my kids to realize, and all the students, that it's a privilege that we have of public education. Um, I did come from, we moved just into the school district two years ago. We did come from a bigger school district. Uh, my husband being here for so long, it was a second home, and it was very easy when we decided this wasn't the school district for us, we need something smaller, it was just to come to Wilson. Um, so I just look forward to being part of this great school board because I have a lot of good things to say about it. Thank you. The first question will go to Chris. What attributes or behaviors are essential for school board members? I think the school board member, um, the probably the strongest uh, trait you can have is to listen to the leaders that are in place in your school district. Um, we currently have outstanding uh, superintendent, principals, uh, staff, and you, you listen to the professionals that are in place there already. You, you get advice from them, and uh, you, you have to trust what they're telling you. I do agree with that. Um, just great leadership already in the school system. I think it's almost about being a support system for them um, and being a team leader. Um, ben, I'll ask you this question. What do you feel you can contribute as a member of the school board? Uh, I am a nurse, um, so I'm just, I think I am a pretty good team player, <laughs> um, quick on my feet, and then also being a voice for a parent um, that has the children currently in the schools, um, yeah. just being a voice for the rest of the parents and mostly those students. Um, well, I believe I get some uh, good leadership uh, attributes as far as uh, my experience is concerned, uh, being an administrator in law enforcement agencies and currently an administrator in the job I'm working in now. So I think that those attributes have definitely helped me be on the school board. Uh, again, I think I'm a good listener. I think uh, yeah, if somebody tells me something, and, uh, I'm open to hearing all sides of it. Uh, of the topic, whether it's coming from a, a parent or coming from an um, administrator or a staff member with the school. 
certainly open to hearing both sides to, to an issue. Um, this question for you, Chris. What is your educational philosophy? Um, my educational philosophy as far as, uh, I guess, I think the public schools, I, I'm a strong believer in public school and having a good public school uh, foundation. And the uniqueness of the Wilson Central School District is the fact that it's such a small school district and the staff and administrators know all the, the kids, and it's almost like a, a private school setting. So I think um, as far as uh, the involvement from our staff members with the kids, uh, getting to know them on a personal level, whether it's uh, in the classroom or out in the sports field, I think it's a uh, very uh, great aggregate that this uh, school has, and I fully support that. Definitely agree with that. I see it firsthand um, having a spouse that works in the school district and as a coach. Um, it is, um, we just look four houses down from school. But it's amazing seeing all the kids always walking by and it's like, hi, this is hard. This is hard. And um, you, it's hard to find, I've been in other school districts, and it's hard to find schools that are that close knit. It's definitely a very tight community. Um, where everyone knows everyone, um, we quickly learn that. <laughs> um, and all the kids know each other. It's great to go into the elementary school, and I was like, well, why is this part? And um, that's hard to be. Okay, this is a question for you, Beth. What is a school board member's role and responsibility? Um, so I did have to be for some of that um, when I first learn about the position and to see open. Um, but I know it's really just to be there for the superintendent. Um, we support the superintendent. We work together as board um, to help make those decisions for the superintendent. Chris? Yes, I agree with that. Um, the, probably the best thing you can do is give an overview or kind of a, a 30,000 foot view of what's going on in the district, help with uh, the guidance of policies and procedures. And again, trust our superintendent, trust our staff, and uh, just listen to the professionals in place. Thank you. <clears throat> Chris, here's a question. What does the role differ from the role of superintendent or administration? How does the role differ from the role of superintendent? Uh, if I if I get this right, it's um, well the superintendent's the boss. I mean, he's the decision maker. Uh, military terms, the buck stops with him, so to speak. And um, and I think again, it, we're fortunate enough to have a superintendent that ultimately takes responsibility of everything that goes on. So um, he trusts his administrators. Uh, he's not um, free to challenge them when they need challenging, but uh, overall, I think uh, a good superintendent will trust those people that he has in place and support them, as well as the, the staff members. Yeah, I agree. And also, um, his job is to superintendents to look for them, those administrators and our administrators. Um, so it's given the trust of that superintendent to bring the right administration into the school district. Thank you. Uh, here's a question. What are some major issues that you believe our school district is currently facing? Yes, I can't think of any major issues. Um, I, I mean, the, the small thing, not small, but security was at the schools was something that um, they always questioned before, but they've been on top of that for the last couple of years. They don't even question that anymore. Um, so, I don't have any. Um, actually, you're right. But the security is a very, very important part of uh, what we are faced with. Um, that's always the unknown. Um, I think we've done the best job that we can possibly to 
um, you're faced with uh, practice and that's always there for any, I think we've done the best job the type of situation of security and I think one of the biggest problems we face as a school board or as a district is probably budgetary. Not so much this year, but I think uh, down the road, it, it could be some, there could be some serious cuts from the state. And I was very impressed with how the legislatures uh, stepped up this time and actually uh, put money back in the budget based on uh, the proposed cuts from the governor. We were facing some uh, pretty, pretty serious cuts, but I think um, that the forecast is for next year uh, is prepared for probably some deep cuts as well. So uh, that's one of the things that I think that we have we really have to get out there. Added to that question, how do you feel as a board member that you get the public to understand what's going on in the legislative branch so it doesn't reflect poorly on the board? Well, I think it's uh, getting the public, informing the public is always kind of challenging. If it's getting people out there, you've got to get the message across. I think uh, whether you use social, social media, a combination of things, good messages to the, to the parents, messages to the taxpayers that um, we're facing a crisis in certain areas that trying to get their involvement. Sometimes it's a little too late that they finally step up. The, you, you see certain, certain uh, community members there all the time. But it's it, to get everyone involved. And what brings, brings that to mind is the fact that, uh, you know, what, maybe 10 years ago, I guess, eight years ago, when uh, they were closed to Ransomville, uh, the community came out closing the elementary school in that part of the district. Um, so we were able to generate a lot of uh, community involvement, a lot of uh, feedback from the community when it came to something like that. So um, I think it's always going to be a challenge in trying to get public involvement topics. Thank you, Matt, for your thoughts. About the same, it's probably one of the few times that it's nice about social media um, because it's a very quick way to get people the information they need. Um, otherwise, that is a challenge. Matt, at this point, I'll go back to you on this question. <clears throat> we all understand information that's not correct. Uh, it's somewhere's false news. How, as a school board member, will you? relate to the public and because you're left by the public to get the right things out to them. You mean like what form I would use? I think I need to learn more points about that. Um, I'm not sure. Chris? Yeah, I, again, I think that's good. It's a very difficult challenge whether you do need social media, whether you, I think, face to face conversation with people, whether you show up at a sporting event, um, you show up at um, various uh, events where the public is coming forward. Uh, we have things like the, uh, the Christmas breakfast that that's a great form. Um, it's for the seniors and they bring a lot of seniors in and gives them the opportunity to see what we're doing here in the school district. Uh, yeah, if there's false information that the best way you can do is uh, attack that directly one on one with people and discuss that and hopefully you, you can put an end to it. But small communities, while they're, they're great, they also have a uh, that's could be the downside because uh, the false falsehood going out there could get a lot more traction than you really like to see. Thank you so much. Here's a question for you, Chris, and then maybe with your past experience, you may work with us in another position. Could you support a board decision you did not vote for in favor of? Why and why not? Oh, absolutely. Uh, that I think it's 
going back to what uh, we were talking about before when uh, Ransomville was on the chopping block. Yeah, I was, I was in strong support of keeping the school for the longest period of time. And then it, it got to the point where it, we realized that the superintendent came up publicly and gave his recommendation. Um, so I felt at that point it was important for the board to get behind that decision and do what the superintendent is recommending uh, based on the facts that they had at hand. So, um, yeah, I, I had to face the situation. It's a very difficult situation, believe me. Uh, you, know, you believe in one thing, but then you, you still have to support what your superintendent said, what the, uh, most of the other board was saying at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I would agree with that as well. And definitely, most importantly, a team layer. And it is uh, the final decision comes as a team. Um, so it's supporting the rest of your teammates and obviously supporting your um, superintendent. Thank you. Here's one for you, Ben. What are your educational priorities for the district relating and how to relate them to the superintendent? What are your educational priorities for the school district relating them to the superintendent? I don't have any yet. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be coming. Um, I think getting to know the schools and just based or past my expectations, um, coming to a small school, um, I've just been so impressed already with the teachers that I've, uh, my children have had or have we spoken with and a relationship with. Um, it's obviously we want to keep going and you know there's build from there, uh, but it has already surpass a lot of those expectations. Um, but I'm sure as I learn more and do more workshops, um, there are things I would absolutely love to bring to the superintendent just to make the school district better. Yeah, um, I would say the priorities is obviously giving the, the students the best education possible out there to give them the greatest opportunity that they possibly can have. Um, one of the things that I thought that was important with uh, that was brought up to us as a board was uh, bringing more students back in the district as far as special ed is concerned. And, uh, yeah, we, we had to bring on a few more staff members, but in the long run, I think it was best for the students, best for um, what we're trying to achieve here in the district. Thank you. Uh, Chris, just one for you. With the uh, form mentioned about the budget cuts. What is something you would prioritize not to be cut when that happens? Programs. They just can't cut programs. And, uh, you've got to keep with, with the staff we have on hand, I think, uh, again, that would be against the cuts of any staff. I would agree with that. I never want to come to a point where we're trying to choose between programs that are athletic programs or music programs. Um, it's all needed. So. Thank you. Uh, Beth, here's one. Um, how do you feel about involvement in areas such as shared decision making and volunteering in the classroom? <laughs> Again, um, how do you feel about involvement in areas such as shared decision making and volunteering in the classroom? Meaning parents? For sure. Parents? Out, you know, retired teachers that have, their children are gone, you know, it's. I love the idea of having parents be part of the classroom, um, being involved, getting to know the rest of the students, getting to know the teacher, um, shared decisions. I don't think parents will be making all the decisions in that way, but um, or retired teachers coming back and um, helping in different programs and being part of them. I think that's very important. Yeah, um, 
I think some of the uh, programs and uh, boards and uh, committees, I guess would be the proper term, that we have in place now are shared decision making uh, committees. Um, so I agree with that, that I'm 100% in favor of getting parental involvement, uh, getting volunteers, retirees to help out on certain things uh, within the community and within is a joint type thing with the uh, school district. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm in favor of uh, transparency, so to speak, and, and other opinions as well. Thank you, Chris. Here's a question. Um, do you support the district's proposed school budget? And if not, how are you expressing this? Uh, no, do you support this district proposed school budget? And how are you getting this out to the public or to understand what the budget is? Okay. Uh, the answer would be yes, the current budget. I'm a committee with a couple other board members, and this is our proposal. Uh, in conjunction from listening to the superintendent and the business official. And uh, I think we we as a board do a great job getting the information out. Um, our business administrator does a presentation. She should actually start her next budget like immediately once this other budget passes or goes up to vote. And then um, it's been a, it's a year long process. And during the year long process, she makes uh, presentations during the board meetings to the public. So again, it's it's, this, it's in this type of form, in the board form, or it's in uh, it's also recorded. So and it's on our website as well. So uh, there's a number of opportunities for that to get out. When it comes to the budget, that's something before I make decisions I would like to learn more about and look forward to um, going to workshops for it and um, learning more specifics about the um, budget because I realize there's just parts that I don't understand yet. Um, I have seen what has been sent to the public with online. Um, from what I've seen, I do support that. Thank you. Um, this is a question for you, Ben. We hear a lot of people that complain that the school taxes is too much for their housing and they have to leave the area. Or they don't have children at all and they feel that they would need to pay for school taxes. How would you tell the public the need of public schools and the importance of it? I, again, just from my opening, I came from an area where there was no uh, public education. I have a mother who, you know, she just went to school until she was 12 years old and after there was no more schooling available. Uh, we moved to the States um, so I can finish school and it is a huge privilege and I think this country does as well as it does um, because of things like a public education because it's available to every child. Um, and um, we're, those, those are, that's our future. These students are our future um, of this country. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, that was a tough one. Well, I mean, from your experience, it's, uh, it says a lot. I mean, but the more can you say, it, public education is just so important for uh, the needs. And I don't have a, uh, any kids in school now anymore, but I did. And uh, we were blessed that we had such a great uh, experience here at Wilson and great teachers and uh, staff members. And, uh, it's one of those things, again, it will also be a small community. Uh, they, they stay engaged with those people. Uh, it, it's, yeah, it can be tough to explain to people that, uh, yeah, your tax are going up a little bit more, but it's, it, you know, it's for the future of uh, the, the kids that are here now. Um, it's amazing, uh, again, how successful so many of our students have been because we, we do have such a good school district and, uh, and we've given these kids the opportunity to, to succeed. So um, you try to explain that to them, explain that how successful a lot of these kids are because of uh, the education they've been given. You hope that 
You can convert somebody. Yes, conversion is hard. <laughs> Are there any more questions? I want to say, um, I've never had, oh, I've never had a fire in my house, but I sure appreciate that I volunteer fire company in my neighborhood. So, since we have no more questions, and I have more questions, do we have to write them down or can we just ask some? No, you can, we have to get written down because we have to ask. Can we get a question? We just had a short break before we get more questions. Chris, maybe the question will be for you. What is your viewpoint on transparency? My viewpoint on transparency, I think, is a very important uh, ideal to live by, I think uh, you, you should, uh, especially as a board, you have to discuss the things that are important for the public in the public sector. There's obviously certain things you can discuss in the public sector, such as personnel uh, matters, or it's individual student matters, and so forth. But overall, yeah, it's, it's transparency is very important. Uh, and it goes along with uh, getting the proper information out uh, to the public and is, you know, hopefully stop these possible false rumors or false news that goes around. Yeah. But. I think transparency goes hand in hand with honesty. Um, I think if you're honest with the public, and um, you are being transparent. Yeah. Thank you. Since we have no more questions, um, let me to close. Let me have set this up for the closing uh, closing statements. Um, thank you for tuning into the league for the help of the, with this evening's uh, candidates forum. Let's show the candidates that we appreciate their participation this evening with a round of applause. Um, we started with uh, Chris for his closing statement. Let's start with Beth with her closing statement. I said a lot of my opening, but um, I look forward to learning more about how I can help the community, how I can help these students, and most importantly, the school district. Um, I look forward to being more involved. Um, I look forward to being a voice for those students and the other parents in the school district, um, along with the staff in the, school, in the schools. Um, I am, I think, a quick learner, I'm fast on my feet, um, and I just look forward to using those skills along with the great school that's already in place. Great. Um, I'd like to just kind of finish up by saying uh, I'm honored to be a member of this board for the last uh, 13 years. I look forward to uh, the next three, and uh, we've, got some, we've got some outstanding board members. Uh, looking forward to Beth being on the board with us. Um, a little side note to say how uh, about this school district that I keep talking about the the great staff and the administrators. Uh, my son came here. We adopted him from Columbia. And English was a second language, and he didn't know a word of English. And day one, and he was immersed right into the classroom, and uh, we've gotten nothing but positive support from. Uh, the staff, the uh, teachers, the administrators, other parents, and um, 
a lot of you probably know Beth's husband was uh, my son's soccer coach throughout all, all its JV and varsity years. And uh, uh, I had to say, uh, one of his favorite teachers, uh, the uh, bottom in social studies as well. I mean, again, we we're just grateful, and this is my way of finding if something bad to the community is certainly for. Well, thank you. Of course, you will all remember to vote in the school board election on May 21st, and urge others to do the same. Tonight's candidate form will be found viewed on the uh, Wilson School Board YouTube channel. I also urge you to vote in primary on June 25th with early voting from June 15th through June 23rd. In the general election on November 5th, with early voting from October 26th through November 30th. The league. Do you mind taking two more questions? Sorry about this. No, that's fine. The tough ones? Yeah. <laughs> So I'll go to, I think it's Chris, with a question. What do you, what would you do to the person, personally connect with the student body? What would you do to personally connect with the student body? As a board member, um, again, I think you, you would attend uh, various sporting, sporting events. You try, you try to talk to students, get to know them. Um, Emma was a member of uh, one of our ex officiato board members this year, so um, she was actively involved. Uh, just, uh, I guess, traditionally, how I get, I get to know a lot of these kids is through friends of my son, through uh, just seeing them out on his, um, the courts or on the field playing, talking to them. And, and again, we're such a small community. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I already feel like I'm everywhere. Um, we're in a lot of sport, um, a lot of sport, sporting games, not just my husband coaching them or um, my kids in the sports, uh, but it's my kids' friends that are also in the sport. Um, even love coming and seeing all the plays that the schools do, um, seeing the music programs that they do in elementary school. My children are also in those. Uh, I absolutely love being involved and seeing everything the school does in the community. Uh, so that would just be an, that's an easy one too. Wonderful. But here's one for you. Um, and this is coming from a student's perspective. Bullying is a prevalent issue throughout the school districts, but also in Wilson. As a board member, what, how will you recommend that we combat this issue? I think when any part of bullying is communication, um, especially you know those tough ages in high school and middle school, um, a lot of times with teaching them how to communicate, um, how to speak to each other. Um, I have worked with a lot of the not a lot, but quite a few of the counselors in the school district, um, and I do think they're amazing. Uh, but in giving them the resources of um, knowing how to handle the situations, or um, sometimes it's just communicating. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I think it's a very uh, important topic, to, and I think mm -hmm. the school district it keeps it high on the radar as far as they're concerned. Uh, I would refer students to reach out to staff members, talk to them, uh, get off social media, or try to avoid social media because it, it, we see that probably it's the biggest uh, forum used to bully a lot of the kids. When I was going to school, it was one on one, but now you get on social media, and that's how a lot of these false rumors go around and false news. But again, I would. Uh, encourage any student that's facing bullying or their parents that their kids are facing bullying is to reach right out to the school. And I know that the school district is a zero tolerance uh, as far as uh, bullying is concerned. On that same point, with bullying or whatever happens, 
is would you as a board member look to have a student liaison with staff faculty so that they all understand what the issues are at hand? I think they do do a pretty good outreach to the kids as uh, right now as far as uh, the bullying. But yeah, we, I think we're always open to any ideas or any type of uh, solutions to the bullying issues. Uh, I do think a lot of it comes first to the staff um, when we first to hear about it. Uh, there's a fine line there with trust. And I think a lot of those students come to teachers or coaches with that trust of um, trying to find a solution or trying to get out of a hole they've gotten into uh, with bullying. Or, uh, so, yeah, I do think it goes hand in hand, and it's important to have the staff ready for that. Thank you again. Would you like to add anything to your closing statements after these last two questions? No, I'm good. I think. Beth is going to do a great job. Looking forward to her being part of our board. Um, looking forward to the next three years. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Thank you very much, Mrs. School District, for uh, allowing me to be involved here, and we're wishing you all the best of luck for the next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.